Hey, what's up guys? I wanted to make a new video showing you around my studio, but first of all, I need to give you guys some context. So I live in Australia and I live in the state of Tasmania, which is all the way down the bottom. It's a little island. It's about an hour's uh, flight from Melbourne, Victoria, which is where I grew up. Um, but I've been living in Tassie for about four, maybe almost five years. And for me, I freaking love it here. It's, it's just really beautiful. There's a lot of amazing places to go and see. Uh, and it's just, it's really a lot quieter. <laughs> and that really suits me because I'm not a big people person. Um, I just feel way more at home here. So I wanted to give a bit of context about where I live because a lot of people don't really know. Uh, much about Australia and they definitely don't know anything about Tasmania. So when we were looking to buy a house in Tassie, one of the main things that I was um, keen for was a studio that was outside of the house. Because I've been working from home for 17 years that studio that I've always had has always been part of the house. Uh, there's never been that separation between home life and work life. So it was important for me to, if we could, find a house that had a separate studio. And we just happened to be really lucky enough to find this very unique property with a very unique studio space that I could do whatever I wanted with. So, welcome to my studio. Uh, the studio consists of two rooms. Well, actually three rooms. So we've got the front room, back room, and the loft, which we'll show you in a minute. Uh, it's still definitely a work in progress. As you can see, the ceiling, I still need to paint that. Um, <laughs> I've been a bit slack with doing these things, but uh, yeah. So originally this room, when we moved into the house was uh, pretty much a garage. It had no walls. Uh, the only thing that they had done was basically they had done the stone, the stone wall, and they haven't even finished actually. So we'll just have a quick look up close. They never actually finished. So one day we're going to get around to fixing that. But yeah, there's a lot of work in progress things still here. But for the most part, um, it's pretty cozy. And I'm just going to show you through a couple of things I have here. Uh, yeah, where should we start? I think we should start right with Goose, my dog here. She's a pretty chill studio dog. She basically just sleeps there all day. <laughs> you're alright, aren't you? Yeah, you're a good girl. Here's where I do all my computer stuff. So, designing the digital sketchbooks, making YouTube videos, all that sort of cool stuff. Um, I have a brand new microphone that I'm going to be using soon, so I'm super excited to use that. Uh, my <laughs> This is my overhead camera setup, which I just need to pull over here. So what I'll do is I'll clear a space on the desk, and this thing holds my phone, which I can set up directly above, say, a sketchbook or my iPad, and start recording that way. Uh, and that's basically just a, I can't remember what you called them, but they're a little tripod thing with three windable legs <laughs> attached to an old lamp. Um, so very DIY. Eventually I'm going to get something a bit better because the one thing I don't like about that is that it, when you shake the desk, because the arm is attached to the desk, it does kind of wobble a little bit. Um, so eventually I'm going to try and fix that. I could probably even mount something up on the roof as well. I could do that. We have a lot of alcohol markers here. I bought this uh, display kind of case from a recycle center and it was a little bit wobbly so we banged a few more nails in it 
chapter on the wall and I've been looking for something that would work for markers for a long time so I was pretty happy that I found this. Uh, so these are just some of my markers and what else can I show you? Uh, I want to show you guys some of the books that I've published over the years. So one of the very first books was called From the Shadows. Uh, I originally self-published it but this version I put on basically print on demand by a company called Blurb, I think. I think you might still be able to get this online, I'm not too sure. I'll have to suss that out. But it's a really, really old work. This is from 2010, so... Ten years ago, my work... Wow. What a journey it's been. This is... yeah. Uh, a couple of years later, I had my first proper book made called Omnibus, The Art of Martin Abel, and it was published by Trinquette Publishing. This book is pretty much just all pin-ups for the most part, but it was a collection of work from over a 10 year span, I think. Uh, obviously not all my work in 10 years, but just some of my favorites. Uh, and it was really fun to design actually, because it's all finished colorful work. So the book really pops. Uh, so that was my first hardcover official published book. And then, what did we go on to? We probably went on to Nightmares and Visions. I'm sure most of you probably remembers this book. Uh, I launched this on Kickstarter. It was a massive campaign that we did. So again, it's another pin-up book. Uh, this was really before my fantasy kind of uh, <laughs> obsession, I suppose you could say. Um, but I was very much still drawing pin-up girls. I'll just flick through that a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that was a monumentous Kickstarter campaign that we did. Something I'm very proud of. Uh, but it also came with this book, which is the guidebook. Now this, this little book, well it's not really little actually, it's got way more pages in here than the main book. But this book actually shows you through the thought process and a lot of behind the scenes information and sketches to so everything that makes up the main one. So there you go, there's those. Part of the Kickstarter rewards, we made about five of these massive books, these massive versions of Nightmares and Visions. All right, so here we go, we have the comparisons of the Nightmares and Visions book. Um, it's really thick as you can see. And it's basically a photo book. So the pages are really thick. The printing came out just amazing. And all the artwork is just huge. So much, much, much bigger than the original book. Uh, but that's just something I'm pretty proud of doing. It came out really, really nice. So it's just you know, one of those things that's really nice to hold on to. Going on to a bit more recent, I did this book uh, called Beginner's Guide to Fantasy Drawing. And it's pretty much exactly what you would expect. It's a beginner's guide to fantasy drawing. Uh, I did almost about half of the book and it goes through all different kind of processes and anatomy, design, proportions, hands, all that good stuff. So that was really cool. My second Kickstarter was for this book called Wanderings, which is a collection of my fantasy sketches and character designs, probably spanning three or four years. Uh, it was a really, really good book to put together. It took a long time. Um, I'm not super keen about that. And that's it for now. Um, hopefully I'm gonna be doing more books in the future. I'm sure I will. Just not just yet. <laughs> not in this current situation. I guess I could just show you a couple of cool things. Arthur Spiderwick's Field Guide. It's an amazing art book. I recommend checking it out. Uh, Brian, Brian Froud art books. Some sketchbooks that were given to me over the years. Can't get wrong with a unicorn. And 
I'd like to talk a little bit about this piece. This was a artwork commission, commissioned by Jamie, my partner. She commissioned John Sommariva in 2014 to draw a rendition of one of my characters, well, two of my characters, for my birthday. And I had no idea it was happening. <laughs> So when I woke up and I saw that, I was just in absolute disbelief. I, I couldn't even realize what I was looking at, to be honest. It just didn't register for about two minutes. But when it finally sunk in, I just, yeah, couldn't believe it. It was just amazing. And it still is amazing. So another one of my prized possessions. Uh, this is an old map of my hometown of Salisbury. It's actually not that old. It looks medieval, but it was, um, I can't remember exactly, but I think it was uh, created in possibly the 80s or the 70s. I'm not too sure. Well, there is one thing I wanted to show you in here, which is this amazing little sculpture based on one of my artworks. And I'll put the information of the artist up right now. So you can go and check him out because he's a very talented sculptor, digital sculptor. Um, but that is just... Yeah, one, one of the things that I will cherish forever because it meant a lot to me that he went out of his way to create that. All right, well, there's not really much else to show you in here, so I think we're going to move on. Oh, except for my little skull staff that I made for the Human Valley Midwinter Festival. <laughs> So this is the back room of my studio, uh, where I really come to just chill out and draw. Um, I've almost made it a computer-free zone. You can see my my laptop up there, which kind of moves around sometimes, depending on what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, this is where I draw and work. Got some books that I'm reading at the moment. Uh, and some of my artwork for Kind of reference, really, not particularly inspiration. <laughs> I'm not really inspired by my own work, but it does. Sometimes I kind of forget <laughs> what I'm doing, who I am. So it, it does kind of help to remind yourself, like, this is, this is what I want to do. You know what I mean? So yeah, lots of, lots of different equipment. Um, I've mainly categorized it into things that I need and don't need. <laughs> this is a pot of pens that are in various different states of chaos. This one is actually what I'm using currently, so brand new stuff here that Jamie has ever so thankfully gone out and bought me recently, because I have a commission to do. So I've got 05, 03, and it's another 03, and it's another 05. Yeah. I do like my microns. You have uh, sketchbooks that I'm working in. These two, well, these three are all finished and filled. This one is my uh, first sketchbook video I ever made, so go please check that out. Uh, these two are my story notes. This one is a watercolour sketchbook. And this one is a little sketchbook that I have not really done anything with, but I intend to. We have my Koi watercolour set. Let me get that open. It's pretty messy. But I love that little thing. And we have the sketchbook that I'm currently working in right now. Um, I'm gonna try and keep working in it, but it's not my ideal sketchbook. The paper is actually really rough. Not particularly what I like. So I do have a new Moleskine book here. These are the same as these. So I'm pretty in love with them. Unfortunately, they run out. So this one is actually a little bit smaller. But I'm going to try and see if I can get used to that. We have another sketchbook here, which is also another more sign. But the, uh, the paper is really, really thin. So not super keen on it. But yeah, so this is, uh, this is where I work. And it's pretty chill. I guess I could um, show you a bit of my absolutely chaotic bookshelf. <laughs> I mean, it's in ter it's in a terrible state. It really is. Anyone who has OCD is just going to be 
really annoyed right now. Um, so yeah, it's completely unorganized, but we've got sketchbooks from 2013, 14, 14, 15, all sorts of different sketchbooks, which we'll go through at some point. Um, some of them are definitely not worth looking in. I probably should throw them out. Just lots of different art books. More art books. And myths and legends. Uh, Disney books. Alphonse Mucha. Walking Dead, which is a very good paperweight. Um, some local stuff. Crystal Clans. Rubbish. This book. <laughs> this book with no cover on it, but I took the dust jacket off because I hate dust jackets. I really do. This book is called Out of This World by Michael Page and Robert Ingpen. So this book is a encyclopedia, basically, of mythological characters. Or you could say the complete book of fantasy. And it's just got an absolute wealth of knowledge. Some amazing illustrations by Robert Ingpen. Uh, and just, yeah, it's just a really cool book. Now, the, the great story about this book is I went to Queenscliff. And there's a bookstore in Queenscliff. And it's a really cool little bookstore in like a little old church or something. Whoops. Never mind. Uh, and there was a really old guy in there who sold me this book. And this book it was in the store was in a glass cabinet. So I had to really talk to him and make, ask to get it out and have a look. And as soon as I saw it, I knew I wanted it. Now, when I got home, I noticed there was this newspaper article inside the book. Look at this. Once upon a time, lifestyle, Geelong advertiser. Now Geelong is very close to Queenscliff. Thursday, August 17th, 1989. And who is it? It's the author and illustrator, Robert, Robert Ingpen. Now, I am 99% sure this is the man who sold me this book. Uh, he was an old guy in a bookstore, and he seemed pretty pretty keen to sell this book. I don't know. Maybe he didn't want to sell it. I'm not sure. But it just seems very interesting that it had a newspaper article in there, and the guy looked very much like the illustrator Robert Ingpen, and he lived in the same town. The bookstore was the same town where he lived. So I thought that was pretty amazing, and it's one of my absolutely favourite books to reference all things fantasy. Let's just try and fix this. I've made an absolute mess of everything. Let's leave it there. <laughs> I can fix it later. Alright, I guess one of the only other things I have to show you is what's up here. So, up here in the loft is a room that I don't actually use very often, but I'm going to try and fix that. So we've got storage in there, a whole bunch of books and comics that I need to sort out, more stuff I need to sort out, a bean bag, and an altar. Pretty cool view out here too, so let's have a look. There's my house. Alright, let's go back down. So that's pretty much a wrap of my quick studio tour video. If there is anything in here that you wanted to know any more info on, uh, please let me know in the comments below. I'm more than happy to do more videos and, you know, maybe even just look through some of the art books that I have. I definitely plan on doing some more sketchbook videos, so be on the lookout for that. But I hope you're all staying sane and safe, and I'll speak to you soon, guys. Thank you. Bye.